Hey everybody, I'm Gino Reynolds from The Real Opinion. So, it's finally here. And this one's gonna be tough. There's a lot to talk about, so in the immortal words of the Joker... And here we go. After the events of Man of Steel, Bruce Wayne decides that the Earth needs a contingency plan to stop Superman if there's even a chance that he might turn on the Earth. That would be the short setup for this movie. The detailed setup would take way too long to fully cover. This is the movie's biggest and most hurtful flaw. It tries to tell and or set up at least seven different stories. Man of Steel 2, The Dark Knight Returns, a Justice League setup, and others. One of which, if I say, it would spoil a major plot point. What I'm trying to say is that this movie had too many stories to feel like a complete and coherent movie. Some of these, especially the big spoiler one, should have been saved for much, much later. Problem is, DC wanted to catch up to Marvel and also not be accused of ripping off Marvel's shared universe plan. I think I would have rather they took their time and world build instead. The best part of the film that offers the most promise for the future is Ben Affleck as Batman and Jeremy Irons as Alfred. In my opinion, all the best scenes in the movie involve one or both of them in some way, shape, or form. There's a scene involving a rescue that just feels like classic Dark Knight stuff. I will say that a lot of people might have a problem with this Batman because, for the lack of a better phrase, he straight up murders people. Because of this, I will put this thought on record now. The new Joker is a former Robin, whether it be Jason Todd, which is my pick, Tim Drake, or Dick Grayson. This is why he is still alive in a world where Batman kills people. When it comes to the other characters, honestly Superman's fine and Wonder Woman really worked for me. Though you may have already seen it in the trailer, the moment she comes to fight is pretty awesome. Lois Lane feels wasted the entire time. They try to make her overly important to the entire plot, but all she does is get into trouble and make stupid decisions that happen because plot. When it came to The Flash, Aquaman, and Cyborg, that stuff should have been saved for an after credit scene, not crammed into the middle of this movie. And now on to Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Oh, I'm sorry, Lex Luthor Jr. I don't even know where to begin talking about this spastic little And the horse he rode in on. Sorry, thank you for letting me get that off my chest. He's just awful, man, awful. Now, let's move on to the title fight, shall we? The reasons that Batman and Superman fight in this movie are kind of dumb. For them to fight, both of these not so easily manipulated characters are easily manipulated into doing so. I honestly think that this part should not have even been in the movie. Though parts of the fight were kind of cool, it still fell out of place. Plus, it doesn't last very long and the reason the fight ends is really, 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 really dumb. The whole doomsday thing is crammed in as well. I know they needed something for the Trinity to fight at the end, but I think Lex Luthor and his kryptonite power suit would have made a lot more sense to the plot. Oh, and the ending? DC Universe, you haven't earned that ending yet. Despite my thoughts on this one, I'm not too discouraged from this DC universe. This movie still had some promise for some of the things to come, even though as a whole, it was a jumbled mess of a story. But remember, it's only just one guy's opinion. I'm Gino Reynolds from The Real Opinion. Until next time.